Hello everyone, in today's video we are going to be looking at how you can set up locked doors and trap chests as well as the inverse of that. So obviously in Foundry you can set up locked doors, however with this setup you can have doors that the players can unlock on their own, either by finding the key if you have put it in the scene, or using their thieves tools to attempt to pry the doors open, or using their strength to break the lock down, or break it apart. So. We are using a few modules to do this. We are using the furnace, MediQL, 5E, 5E e, loot sheet NPC, Innocente open lock, as well as I'm also using pickup sticks. The reason I'm using pickup sticks is so that I can have the key on the scene. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Right now, we are looking at the player's view. And as the player, the player can walk to a door and can attempt to open up the door, but when they do, they'll see the door is locked. So right now the player is walking around and seeing that all the doors are locked and it looks like they have no way to get out. And that is where this setup comes into play. So the first thing you want to do is you want to give these two macros, the find trap macro and the open chest macro to your players. They can be found in the compendium underneath open lock demo, Innocente open lock. If your players do not have access to the compendium, you can either give them access or copy over the code for them. After your players have these macros, they can use them to check the chests, check doors to see if they are trapped, like so. And we can see, yes, it is locked. No, we don't have the key. And yes, there is a trap. Knowing that there is a trap on the chest, they're going to attempt to open it now. We see here, Warning, trap detected. They're going to attempt to unset the trap. They make a roll of an 18. And we can see the trap was successfully deactivated. Next, they're going to choose between either picking the lock or breaking the lock. My character is going to attempt to pick the lock. They got a 2, so the lock was not opened. With misuse, the thieves tools broke. So, the thieves tools on my character sheet have broken. So now my character has the option of either attempting to break the lock, or if they have another set of thieves tools, they can use that. But they don't, so here's the attempt to break the lock. Now, behind the scenes, you can set the number of times that they can do this, but eventually they break down the chest, break down the lock, and uh-oh, there is nothing in this chest. So this chest offers them no way to get out of this room. However, they did not set off the trap, and they were able to open up the chest through brute force. My player, just having broken their thieves' tools, is probably going to be a little bit cautious about trying to make their way out of the room. So scanning around the room, they see that there is a container on the table next to the cutlery. Opening it up, you can see inside of the container there is a tome. They'll go ahead and snatch that. And then move on. We can see that the chest opened up and then closed back afterwards. After my players picked up the tome item, they're going to make their way around the room checking the doors for traps. This can let them know if the door is trapped like the chest was, and also it can let them know if it is locked and if they have the key. So checking this door here, we're going to target it in the same way and click find trap. We see the door is locked. The door has no traps, but we have the key and it lets us know the item that matches the door. Knowing that we have the key, all we need to do now is walk up and interact with the door and the door unlocks and my player can make their way out of the room. Simple as that. So now that we've seen how it functions from the player's perspective, let's go jump over to the GM and see how it functions and how we can set this up. All right, the first thing you want to do as the GM is you want to create a new item titled lock, and this item needs to be of the type feature. All right, so here is my lock feature, and we can see there is a new tab titled open lock. However, to use my lock, I need to create a new actor. 
this actor needs to be an NPC using the 5E NPC loot sheet. So we are going to create two actors, one for a chest, one for a locked door. So here are my two actors. I have my treasure chest and my door locked or locked door. And we can see I've already moved on the locked feet onto both of the sheets. For the locked door, I don't really worry about setting an item or setting an icon, I should say, because the player will never see this sheet. So they will never actually see what it looks like. Even the actor itself is a transparent token, and I will show you where I got my transparent token from in case you want to use the same. So let's go ahead and start first with the treasure chest because it's a little bit easier to set up. So looking at our treasure chest, we want to go into our edit, open lock, and we can set everything we want here first. So we can decide, first of all, that it's enabled, that it is a lock chest. We can type an item key name. This is what I did earlier with the tome item. You can decide what the name of the item is. Make sure that it is the exact match to the item you want to use. So like key two needs to be key to the item, all the same letters uh, capitalized and whatnot. Walled coordinates you do not need to use for a treasure chest that is related to a door. This arm trap DC, that is whatever the check they did um, to disarm the trap. You decide what that needs to be. Find the trap. This is perception or investigation, your choice. There is the passive choice as well, the passive find, which is why my player was finding them instantly because they have a high passive perception. The forced lock, what the DC is for the strength. And the open lock DC, what they need to roll using their thieves tools. And the threshold of how under what number the tools will break. All right, so that is how to set up all of this. But earlier I had a trap. How can we add a trap into the chest? It is also very simple as well. Going into details, I can add an action. I can decide what type of attack it is going to be. And I can set up my damage formula here. The same way I would set up a weapon. And then after this is set up, I'm done. So you can change what type of trap it is, how it deals the damage, piercing, bludgeoning, slashing, however you want to do, if you want to have a trap in the first place. If you don't want a trap, set this to nothing there, and nothing there, and there will be no trap. All right, pretty cool. This is how you set up a treasure chest. Let's go take a look at our door next. As I mentioned earlier, the door does need to have an actor attributed to it as well. However, you probably don't want to have an actor that is visible on top of the door. It looks probably a little bit out of place unless you match up exactly the style of the door you're using. I find it much easier to use a transparent token. For my transparent token, I got it from trigger actors from the trigger happy module. So I just dragged this onto the scene and then the player will never see it, but they can still interact with it. They can target it. They can do everything like so, like they normally would. But they don't have permissions, they can't actually do anything with it other than target it. So I just place it on top of my door. And then I wanted to set this to be matched up with to represent the actor of the locked door. And then everything else was the same as far as the lock goes, adding the lock in the same way you did. You can edit it the same way, adding in traps if you want to changing the DCs as you want to. However, the one thing you need to change is you need to add in wall coordinates for a door. And to find the wall coordinates, you just go to your wall tool, click the door, copy everything here in this first line with the exception of the brackets. Do not include the brackets. And then you can go ahead and save this, close it out, close it out. And if we go back to our actor, we should see everything is in place now. So I could do the same thing if I wanted to. Oh, sorry, this should be on, not that line, it should be on that line there. So I can change everything as I want to, change in an item key name. Um, I can decide what the DC is for both breaking the door down, finding any traps, all of this can be set up as you want. All right, so that's everything as far as the 5E loot sheet NPC. 
our 5e NPC loot sheet, as well as the Innocente open lock, as well as some of the other ones we used. Pick up sticks I used to add in a key into the scene. This is incredibly simple to do. All you need to do is have your item you want to add in. Let's go to my items tab. And I'll just say I want to add the lock to the scene for whatever reason. If I click and drag it onto the scene, I can choose either to have it as an item or to have it as a container. I usually choose container, and the reason is because container, the image can scale. If I choose item, it comes out like that, and it fits the grid perfectly, and I cannot scale it. However, if I choose instead a container, I can change the width of this to be 0 0.5, 0 0.25, I can change the sound effect that for when they open it up. I can add in extra loot as well, like coins and things like that. It works very similar to the 5e uh, NPC loot sheet. So you can add this in pretty simply, very easily into your game. All right, cool. I think this has pretty much covered everything that I wanted to talk about today. I hope you can use this in your game. Let me know down in the comments below if you have any questions. Thanks, everyone.